And now let's have the 15, Roxanne Lam and Angeline Hui from St. Mary's Kenosian College. Today they are also talking about balloon. Who is blowing up the balloon? Let's hear it. Good afternoon, everyone. She is Angelina and Roxanne, and we are both 16. We are fortunate to have the opportunity to stand here and share our ideas with you all today. Having a huge interest in science and interacting with children, we, are, we decided to take part in this contest. We have sisters in our family, and they find science really boring and difficult to understand. We want to tell them that science, or especially chemistry, is actually all around us in our daily lives. Considering that most kids love food, and just like we do, we take this as our theme and start to design an interactive experiment in which children may find chemistry more applicable and fun. Oh, Rosalind, I can't blow up this balloon. It's so challenging and tiring. Your face is turning red, so just stop doing it. Can you think of any other ways to inflate a balloon? Really? I can't think of any. Do you have any suggestions? So maybe shall we have a look at our sense? Sure. This, is, sure. this experiment is suitable for children aged 10 or above. Remember to label the conical flasks with their corresponding names. This step is really important because they are used for identifying the solutions. Another point to note is that the axis should have the same measurement to avoid experimental errors. Then, after transferring the baking soda into each balloon, make sure that there are no holes around the balloon, or else the solution may splash up and hurt your eyes. Fit the mouth of the balloon over the opening of the flask carefully with the spilling the powder into the solution. After that, tear up all the balloons at the same time. Making a hypothesis between an experiment can surely stimulate our thinking. This can allow children to think about what could happen later in the experiment. 
Therefore, before the experiment, ask yourself what will happen to the balloon when we tip the powder into the solution, and why. After that, don't stop asking questions even during the reaction. We will try to ask children what do they hear or see when the powder is added. What are the gas bubbles and why is the gas produced? Asking questions after the reaction allows children to have a better understanding and also trigger their learning. In this experiment, try to think about whether the liquid samples have anything in common with which liquid will give rise to the largest balloon. Wait a second, we have been talking about the experiment for such a long time, but actually, why are you blowing up the balloons? Haha, -ha, it's Mary's birthday next week and I'm preparing for the surprise party. Maybe we can demonstrate the experiment to her. It will certainly be a unique present. Let's also decorate the birthday party with balloons. I can help since I don't need to use my energy to inflate the balloon. Wait, do you know that we can even take a step further and play with the gas inside the balloon? Let's have a look of the video. water and corresponding salts. Therefore, we can see gas bubbles and hear a hissing sound. When carbon dioxide is produced, gas pressure inside the balloon increases and becomes larger than that of the atmospheric pressure. Therefore, the balloon becomes inflated. Another concept we want to show children is that it's about acid. Among the four liquid samples, all of them are acidic. We can try to give them some more examples of acids such as lemon juice and coke. We hope that they can find out that all acids have a sour taste, and this is a common characteristic. Another observation is that balloon for vinegar is the largest. This can be deduced by telling children that the amount of carbon dioxide produced in this reaction is the largest. Thus, vinegar is the most acidic out of the four solutions. We hope that children will understand this concept by observing the different sizes of the four balloons. We hope to inspire our children to think more by showing them the fire extinguisher experiment. Carbon dioxide produced can put off fire. Carbon dioxide can cut off oxygen supply because it is denser than oxygen, so the fire goes out quickly. We can further demonstrate this idea by showing them the fire triangle. Angel Lin, are there any safety precautions in the experiment? Of course. Firstly, remember to check that there is no leakage between the balloon and the bottle. Otherwise, the solution will splash out. Children should use a match or a lighter with their parents' guidance and supervision. Last but not least, children should wear gloves and safety goggles throughout the experiment to prevent contact of vinegar from their skin and their eyes. After all, Roxanne, how did you come up with this idea? Firstly, I tried to recall what I liked when I was a child. I remember I really liked colorful things such as candles and balloons. I tried to come up with experiments that can inflate a balloon using food as I really love eating food. Ah, then for the production of carbon dioxide through neutralization, there will be a self-inflating balloon. To demonstrate the property of carbon dioxide, you use the fire extinguisher experiment. You're so smart. Wow, you're able to complete the experiment. I'm sure you have learned a lot from it. I wish that not only you, but more and more children can discover the fun science of chemistry in their daily lives. We hope that you all enjoyed our sharing and you can try this experiment at home. But bear in mind that safety comes first and do follow our safety precautions. Thank, Thank you. you. BASF. We create chemistry.